<laughs> you two back on the show. John, your first time on the show. Thank you yes. for joining us. Um, here's the album, ladies and gentlemen, and the exciting news is you must be filled. It's just gone to number one. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, so how did it come about? How did you two start working together? What was the kind of uh, the beginning of this partnership? Don Nebworth, John come down to play on one of the tunes at the end, and um, so in the rehearsals leading up to it, I hadn't seen him for ages, so I said, what have you been up to? And I've been writing some tunes. So he was singing him, and he went, well, you are. Wow. <laughs> and I was going to have a year off and that, you know what I mean? So, uh, it's his fault. So, so you've been writing with his voice in mind? Um, not until Nebworth rehearsal. So who was your first choice? <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you write, then? He, you know, he was looking, he was looking, you were looking after, you were looking out for a girl, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Ended up with this sort. I need new management. <laughs> <laughs> and had, were you always on the same page? Like, did you have something in mind from Liam, and did he always sort of like, did it always gel? <laughs> I thought, oh man. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> well, this way you're going to have a pop now, aren't you? No. <laughs> no. Go on. Just relax. <laughs> Just relax. I'm not your brother. All right. <laughs> Rob, have you ever seen these guys live? Oh, together I, I, unbelievable. I feel like I'm dressed like their manager sat here, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the annoying new one. That's you like our tour magician. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, no, I, was, I was at Nebworth. It was unbelievable. It was, it was amazing. So like, I'm buzzing, buzzing for the, the, the new live show. You start next week with a tour. Wednesday, yeah. yeah. Yeah, can't wait. So, yeah, it was unbelievable. Nebworth was amazing. So, yeah, it's great. Uh, especially as well, and this is, don't want to kiss your ass too much, but it's very exciting for me to be on this sofa with you two. Like, the, your music, when you're a working-class kid hearing these songs, it, it's, it's magical. It makes you feel like you can go off and do things. And, I, you know, I think Kevin Bridges spoke about it before. I think a lot of young working-class people have been influenced by the lyrics and also watching people go and dominate the world with their music. It's really inspiring, and I loved it. it was, to see it live was, like, quite a magical and moment. And the lyrics and the attitude that, particularly, you had when you started out was that kind of, like, you were doing it on your terms, which was well, refreshing. I was inspired by John's band, you know what I mean? Like, he was the first band I ever went to see. We so how old were you when you saw the Stone Roses? 15, 16. Yeah. And that was it, changed my life. I thought, you know what, that's it. Uh, did you know, when, when Oasis happened, did you know that you'd help create this band, John? I found out much later. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, meant, obviously meant quite a lot to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, you, uh, you live now... Is it you live on a farm or you, live, you have a farm? Is that right? I live on one, yeah. OK. Is yeah. it a working farm? Do you actually do farming on it, or is it just you've got the space of a farm? No, uh, there's some sheep there, but I'm, I'm hands off. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to be two hands on the sheep. <laughs> Here's what I'm really interested about you two in particular, and you've both been through a very similar thing, which is you are both part of very, very successful bands, very important bands, and it's kind of, I imagine... You know, it's a huge life experience to go through that, to create something and then to put it out of the world, it becomes a big success. And then both of you, the band's ended, for both of you. When the Stone Roses was kaput and mm -hmm. you left what was left of them, what was your first kind of, like, the first few months like for you? Um, I, just, I think I carried on writing songs, eventually got another band together, the Seahorses. Then I had loads of kids. <laughs> A productive way to spend the energy. <laughs> Liam, for you, when, when oh, I was... swear the pub. <laughs> <laughs> but longer term than that first evening <laughs> or the first week. Because uh, something... I had a lock-in in the pub. Yeah. <laughs> Stretched it out. Um, there's a track on the album. I mean, I like the whole album. The whole album's great, and congratulations. But there's the last track on the album. Is it Mother Nature's Song? Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just kind of about... I guess reconnected to nature, is that why? Is that something you've been through? I'm digging it, me, man. As you get older, I like walking the dog and that round the woods. It's nice, man. I'm the new Goldilocks. <laughs> and, John, and the, the, let me ask you about animals, because I know uh, you've got some sheep. Mm-hmm. I imagine. Do you have any pets? Or are the sheep pets? Or do you have dogs, that kind of thing? I've got a dog and a cat. Dog and a cat? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have dogs? I've got nothing to contribute. <laughs> I've got, I've got, oh, I have got, I've got two dogs and I've got a cat and I'm, I've moved to the, I grew up in the city. So I've you've to, moved to the country as well now? Yeah, and I, and I, you've, I don't know if you've always, have you always been on the farm? Have you always been out there? No. No, 